start recording. Okay, we're recording now. Okay, so happy new year, everyone. Welcome back. Um, before we get into the nitty gritty of today's agenda, um, I wanted to ask Steve to read something he just read offline here. Um, why don't you go ahead and read that letter from the student, Steve? Sure, this is uh, the letter that students at Hampshire College wrote, a cover letter to the Climate Action Plan for Hampshire College that we developed as a class last semester. And I think they wrote a very nice cover letter and I thought I would just share the very end of it, the last paragraph, and it says, the work does not end with this document, the Climate Action Plan. We leave our community with this message. We must have hope. We must address the climate crisis by first sharing and processing our feelings of fear, sadness, and anger. But to hope is not enough. We must act. And in acting together, we cultivate the strength to keep working towards a sustainable future for all. Thank you, Steve. Amen. <laughs> Love it. Um, all right. So uh, Paul Gromer is here. So I think what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, Stephanie, is put um, uh, move everything on the agenda down as much yes. as we can. Mm -hmm. And just let's find a note taker. We have to do that though. So whose turn is it to take notes today? I think Don, did you do it last? Yeah. I think Don did. Right. So Sorry, I'm muted. yes, I did last night. So looking at the uh, minutes, just going down the list, uh, Stella, I'm just going yeah, down the do list. That. Can you do that? Okay, great. Um, all right, and with that, then what we will put off if uh, it looks like there are no attendees anyway, so we'll put off public comment, we'll put off the uh, going over the minutes um, and just skip right to number four on the agenda, the update on the CCA legislation by Paul Romer. Thank you, Paul, very much for joining us here today. Um, my pleasure, it's a pleasure to, um, it's a pleasure to be here. So. Um, I can just launch ahead or charge ahead if that makes sense. So I'll, I'll start talking and then you'll tell me what to stop or when I go off, off course. So they're really like two related things that might be of interest. One is um, the legislation, which is pending, which would change the rules for CCAs. And then in parallel with that, the Department of Public Utilities is a process underway where they are developing what they call guidelines for the regulation of CCAs. And those two things are happening at the same time. Um, we're originally quite a bit in conflict, but now are seem to be coming together more. To start with the legislation, I can give you a quick update on that, although there may not have been much action there since you last knew. Um, there is a bill, in fact, a few different bills quite similar. The main one was filed by Representative Vitolo. It's House 3852. This bill would um, reduce in a significant way Department of Public Utilities oversight of aggregation programs and provide more flexibility to cities and towns. Um, it was developed in response to a situation where the Department of Public Utilities approval of aggregations slowed um, to a snail-like pace and the approval process went from four months to over three years. And in parallel with that, the Department of Public Utilities was increasing its micromanagement of you, of the program. So I was telling it used to be they provided general guidance and municipalities could operate within that, and it became increasingly prescriptive. So both the slowness and the micromanagement created a lot of um, unhappiness on the part of cities and towns. Um, the legislation was developed. Um, a letter was sent in with well over 100 cities and towns signing it, encouraging the legislature to enact this legislation. Um, there's been a public hearing on it, and now it's in um, committee. It's in the uh, Energy and Telecommunications Committee. And the, ex the way that committee typically operates is they come up with one great big bill at the end of, towards the end of the legislative session. Um, so that would be really in the, in the, uh, in the early, like in, in May, June, that time frame, And it, there's a good, good chance or some chance anyway, this bill will be included in that. Um, but there may not be a lot of public 
information about what's happening until the committee comes moves forward with their with their combined bill, which would include if it includes this, this, and then some of the other things they've been working on. Um, so that's the legislation. And then in parallel with that, there was the DPU guidelines um, to try to with the goal of sort of streamlining the aggregation review process. Um, they came out with an initial draft in August, um, which was widely panned by all from all sides and quite a number of uh, cities and towns, including Amherst, you know, submitted comments to the DPU saying going in the wrong direction here, too much micromanagement, please give the cities and towns more flexibility. Um, the DPU has been responsive to that and they held, they've done two things. They came out with a, or agreed to hold a technical session, which is their name for a meeting where you talk about things. Um, and then they came out with a revised draft for discussion of the guidelines to discuss at the technical session. And the revised draft um, was much better from the cities and towns perspective, offered a much lighter touch in the regulation and pared back what had been quite a lot of the micromanagement. Um, the status of that is now um, the department said they're going to create a working group to talk through these details. But in the meantime, some of the cities, the really the consultant group that works with cities and towns, my firm and there are a couple of others, um, are working together to try to, at the department's acceptance for us to sort of come up with a proposed revised draft to take what the DPU presented and maybe take it a, a step further. Um, and so that process is underway. Um, I'll say just one other thing, like what's behind this big change in tone by the DPU. And, and I think it's one they've really heard from the cities and towns that they're unhappy with the way things are and they want to be responsive to that. Um, and secondly, we do have, you know, three or two new commissioners appointed by Governor Healy. Um, initially, they didn't change the way aggregation worked, which created a lot of frustration because many assumed new commissioners, new game, um, but they didn't. It turns out though, that wasn't because they were happy with the way things were. It was maybe just, they had other things they needed to take care of first, um, but now they're focused on the CCA and they're, they seem to be moving it in a, in a much better direction. So can I ask a quick question? At one point, uh, there were a bunch of emails that crossed my desk, and I don't know if it was about the legislation or about the rules from DPU, that this is the question of opt-in versus opt-out, that there was either a rule or the legislation that was going to make it opt-in instead, instead of opt-out. And I just wanted to check, is that still the case? Is it still there? Is it something we should be responding to, or is that now out? Is that idea um, right. opt-out? Yes. No. So that's a great question. So. Um... I think the the uh, the uh, the genesis of those emails was a slight misunderstanding of what the DPU had proposed. So okay. they weren't proposing to change the rules from opt in to opt out. It was that there's an obscure clause about what happens if a municipality changes its products and it's something you opt into and now it's different. You then have to re opt in, but it was limited to uh, that very, very small circumstance. There's no proposed change to the overall opt out versus opt in approach. Okay, great. Um, so do you want to keep going, Paul? Well, that's, that's what pretty much what I had to say, but I'm, I'm happy to answer any, any questions. And then I guess the only thing I could, add maybe to what I said is like, what would be next from here? So right. it's my hope that if a new draft can be prepared and in a timely way, and there's a really short window to do it, there may be some outreach again to the cities and towns to try to get their support for the new draft because the DPU will be wanting to hear, is there support for this idea to the city or cities and towns still thinking the same way? So. Um, you might hear from me more asking if the, your, the community would like to sign on to this new proposal. It may also be true, though, that the, the schedule just doesn't permit that because we have, a, we have a very limited time wanting to get it done and then maybe not enough time to, you know, see, ask the cities and towns to support it. 
Right. Okay. Because that's what I wanted to ask. Is there a role that we can play here? Is there a letter that needs to be written or, or a statement that needs to be made from ECAC that might be helpful? Um, yes. Certainly if that, if it turns out there is, I will absolutely let you know. Okay. That's, that would be great. <laughs> um, what about the, so where is our application now and what is the, it sounds like nothing happens until the new rules are in place. It sounds like the new rules are, did I hear this summer? Well, um, yes. Yeah, so no, no set timeline for the new rules. It does seem that the DPU is moving fast. One thing I neglected to mention that they had about 20 plans pending, some of which for three years or more. And they must have approved 15 of them in the last two weeks of the year. So oh. the, the new commissioners are really accelerating things. Um, they are approving them even without the rules in place. Exactly, they are. Slightly unfortunately, though, like kind of under the old rules. So those approvals include a bunch of restrictions that may not be in place under the new rules. And though they've said once the new rules have are in place, they apply to everybody. So if you had an approval under the old rules, you can still take advantage of the new. Good. Um, in terms of uh, of your proposal, it it has been filed. It's pending. The next step, the is a DPU has a required public hearing, um, which just scheduled. Um, forgive me, I forgot to look up the date. I can for January. That's um. It's January twenty second. Sorry, I'm January just going to jump 22nd. in. Yes. Thank you, Stephanie. Sorry. That is a bit of a formality, so it will be important that a couple of folks go and comment on it. But it there's no need to try to like bring out have, like have a whole bunch of people come because it it wouldn't make a difference one way or the other. They they go through the formality, but not the the public hearing doesn't have a lot of consequence. So someone from ECAC probably ought to be there, and I'm going to be in Costa Rica. So can well, we give um, Laurie, if I could jump in, we actually have the Valley Green Energy Working Group that's been working oh. on this, and okay. those folks are going to attend. So okay, there's they, we really only need one person from each community, and I'm actually going to represent Amherst. Okay, great. Then thank you, Stephanie. Sure. <laughs> um, are there other questions? I'll just throw out one and, and hi, Paul, good to see you. Um, um, I guess you've been at this for so long um, in, in several roles that cover all the perspectives. Um, I'm wondering whether, obviously this is all really good news uh, as far as I'm concerned with regard to cities and towns engaging in CCAs, uh, both in terms of less restrictions and expedited process. But is there anything that you read or see in the proposed rules um, that give you pause in terms of public policy or things that cities and towns should be concerned about um, um, in their new uh, freer reign in developing these programs? I, 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 there isn't really anything that concerns me, though, the way... I've come to think about it as that you know the department or not the the state had a way of managing CCAs that and you know legislation that governed them and a review process that worked really quite well for about 15 years. It was smooth. The review process was quick. The municipalities had flexibility to do what they wanted. And then over the last few years, the DPU took it in a different direction: slower reviews, more micromanagement. I had been afraid, and I think most people were that like this we were this was the path we were now on mm -hmm. but now it's looking more like that was a detour and we're moving back to the old path which is was a successful one or a good path so I'm, I'm i'm feeling pretty good about it and i think i really think on these programs the more my from my perspective the more municipal flexibility the better you know different cities and towns will have different ideas and it's great to let them try the different ideas and um, and also different things that would fit better in different places. So I think the more flexibility for the cities and towns, the better from just from a, a policy perspective. Good, good to hear. Other questions? If not, I have one other, Paul. Um, so in regards to the legislation that you mentioned, 
Um, is there anything for us to do just as individuals there in the way of contacting our representatives and encouraging them to support such and such a language? Um, or is that going to become irrelevant if these new rules are passed? And <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm not certain how the legislature is going to, what they're going to do in light of this. I think a lot of the impetus for the legislation has been, seems has been taken away. And so it could be that the way the legislature will react is, well, we don't need to do this anymore. Um, although they may also think, well, we were on a, doing something good, so we're going to continue doing it. I'm not really sure at this stage. I am, um, just by coincidence, I'm in a, a meeting tomorrow with one of the legislative committee chairs. I might get a better sense um, from that. One thing that was interesting on that is that the the chair of the legislative committee that that's, has the bill came to the technical session, which is very unusual that he would come, someone with that position would come to a regulatory technical session. And what I personally found very interesting is he didn't say anything. He just sat there and observed. <laughs> and of course, the DPU commissioners knew just who he was. Yeah, so he didn't yeah. need to make big speeches. He no. just sat listened, you know, in a very polite, respectful way, but he was there keeping his eye on things. So I thought that was great. I thought it showed good, you know, good legislative involvement in, in this issue. Oversight, what they're supposed to be doing. Right, um, exactly. Yeah. So that's the, it sounds like the best thing to do would be either nothing or just writing a note saying that you're glad to hear that these rules are being passed through DPU and uh, appreciate your, your representative or, or senator's uh, efforts at uh, you know making sure these regulations or or the law you know either one that making sure that this change happens whichever way it happens. Yeah, I I think that's right, and we should to no more. Um, you know, I think that that for the DPU, I think we're on a great direction, but they're not final yet, so they could still right. you know veer off the road again. Not impossible, but I think we're yeah. on a good path for now, and I'll I'll definitely. Um, you know, keep keep Stephanie for sure up to date as things develop, and so the committee yeah. can decide how you how you want to respond. Yeah, and if there's ever anything that you need us either as a committee or as individuals just to respond to, just uh, you know, let us know. Very good, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you for your time. Any other last uh, questions, comments? Nope. All right. So thanks again, Paul. Great. Thank we'll... you. Thanks very much for having me. It's good to see everyone. Yeah. Take care. Thanks, Paul. Bye. Okay. So back to the agenda. Um, has everyone had a look at the minutes? Shall we bring them up? I can bring them up. Track minutes. Uh, can you guys all see that okay? Make it a little bigger. Um, how about I make this bigger if you... There we go. Okay, so this was from last time. I assume the changes were made to the last minutes. Any comments, suggestions, changes? That's it. And then there was Martha's comment. I'll move that we accept the minutes as they are. Is there a second? Is 
Second, anyone? Oh, I'll second. I thought you did second, sorry. Okay. No, sorry. No, no, I was looking for a second. Okay. Okay, then. Okay, Laurie, can you, thank you. Yeah. All right, so make sure you're unmuted and your camera is on, please. And in no particular order, Roof? Yes. Goldner? Yes. Selman? Stain. Breger? Yes. Allison? Yes. D? Yes. Okay, minutes are approved. Okay, public comments. Do we have anyone in the audience? We do yeah. not. Uh, but hopefully we will next time because we will have a presentation. But let's go ahead and continue on down our our um, list here. Um, so the next thing on the agenda are, are updates. Uh, so the only update I have on heat pumps is that I'm, you know, as I said last time, I finished the Rewiring America Heat Pump Coach Program, and I will be helping to facilitate it this time. I will be a heat pump or an electrification guide. It's a little scary sounding. I imagine myself, you know, being in a circuit somewhere, but <laughs> um, at any rate, I will be participating in that. Um, and, and it looks like, Stephanie, it's going to be Thursdays. I don't know if they've announced it yet because they're still, they still haven't announced who's going to be in the course, uh, but I think that announcement will come out, who, you know, who the students are will come out next week. Okay. Yeah. Cause I haven't heard anything at all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I realize that I'm surprised they're putting it off so long. They have, they have big plans to train something like a thousand coaches in the first half of this year. Um, so they need to get serious about you know, letting people know earlier. Um, Just for my curiosity, is that in Massachusetts or is this nationwide? Nationwide. <laughs> there are, yeah. it's, it's nationwide. It's quite impressive how nationwide it is. Um, yeah. So I don't have anything more than that. I guess we'll hear, um, we'll get staff updates later to see if there's anything more on the heat pump program. But until we have that heat pump program in place, I suspect I won't have a lot of updates. Um, so transportation, Stella? Um, I think really just the, the draft of the letter to the editor um, which we could look yeah. over now if people want. Yeah. It's actually next on the agenda since we've already uh, heard Paul's um, presentation. So why don't we just jump right to that? Uh, I can share the draft or you can share it. Uh, yeah, feel free to share it because I, I it's a little hard to do minutes and... Um, okay, give me a second here. Yeah, I... I, I can do it as well. Just a letter to, letter to the editor on behalf of all of us to the Hampshire Gazette. Why don't you uh, go ahead and share it, Stephanie? Sorry, before we do this, because I made sure. some comments in mind that um, I want to discuss, but I don't necessarily need to show them to everybody. Sure. I was struggling to come up with like enough for an op-ed, <laughs> although if like get the word count there. Um, but if people think it should be an op-ed, we can try to expand it. Is that big enough or can I make it? Do I need to that's, make it bigger? That's fine. Okay. Um, so I, I thought this was, was nice, except there's one sentence in the first paragraph that I'm having a little trouble with. Um, so I, I did a quick look right before the meeting, um, sec section where it says section 16B extends this to school grounds. Um, that's true, but the rule that's mentioned there, so section 16B of that law extends the law to school grounds, but it give some other body, I think the motor vehicles department or something like that, the ability to make regulations about what exactly the limits are, the time limits and the temperature limits on idling. And um, so just, just clarifying it by saying, you know, uh, well, it could probably leave it as that, but I, I was con confused about the idling for longer than one minute in any 15 minute period is illegal on school grounds when the temperature is under 35 degrees. So uh, I kept expecting that to say over 35 degrees. You mean when it's over 35 degrees, they can't idle for it? Because one minute sounded like a very short time to me. But the point is that no idling is allowed above 35 degrees. So I just wanted to clarify that by saying something like, uh, let's see, how can we phrase it? Um, idling for longer than one minute in any 15 minute period is illegal on school grounds. Uh, idling for a maximum of one minute 
in any 15 minute period is legal only when the temperature is under 35 degrees, something like that. You know what I mean? Otherwise, yeah, totally. Otherwise Sounds great. Yeah. Um, so you want to go ahead and tr let's try that. I don't know if that phrasing is the best or not, but I think what I said, idling for a maximum of one minute in any 15 minute period is only legal. Uh, I can make it from my copy. It's only legal. I don't think we need to say on school grounds again, because we just said that to school grounds. Idling for longer than one minute in any 15 minute period is only legal if the temperature is under 35 degrees. No, I, I mean for a maximum of one minute, sorry, for a maximum, for a maximum of one minute. Okay. So does that sound right? I'll read that, I'll read that sentence one more time. Uh, section 16B extends this to school grounds, colon. Idling for a maximum of one minute in any 15 minute period is only legal if the temperature is under 35 degrees. Um, what about section 16B clarifies that with respect to school grounds or something? Because it doesn't really, it doesn't really like on second look, it doesn't really like extend it because it's a totally different policy kind of. Uh, no, 16B, I think, does extend it to schools. It just, hang on a minute. I gotta look. I just had it up a minute ago. I mean, it extends like the anti idling provisions, but it doesn't, it, it is like pretty different. Yeah, it, it, it extends the section 16 to school property. And it says that the adoption of the specific regulations quoted there are actually 540 CMR 27 from the DM, from the you know motor vehicles department or whatever it's called, it CMR. Um, the, the, because that's the, the registry of motor vehicles in consultation with the Department of Education are the folks who adopt regulations to implement that section. So there's a separate law where it says, if the exterior temperature is less than 35 degrees Fahrenheit, then idling is allowed to heat the interior of any motor vehicle other than a school bus. School buses can do it for a little longer for a period or periods aggregating not more than one minute in any 15 minute period. That's the specific rule that's actually not mentioned in section 16B, it's mentioned elsewhere, but it's easy to find once you know where the, if you just Google it, once you know who's making the rule. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think however we want to phrase it is fine as long as like, because it is, I think people don't know the rules. Right. As long as it's clear what what is actually going on. Yeah, and it's not actually section 16B and that colon sort of indicates that it is. So maybe we should change that. Um, See, see, neither of those, uh, section A or B, neither of those actually gives a time limit. Um, those are a matter of rules published elsewhere. They just make it possible to regulate that. Where, where are you looking? Because when I look at the... The legislature document, it does say five minutes. Oh, in the first part in 16A? Yeah. Okay, then I, I'm sorry, I missed that. You're probably right then. Uh, hang on a minute, uh, 16A. Um, I just have to go back to 16A. I had it open a moment ago. Yeah, 16A. Yeah, it's the first. Yeah, it does, okay. Yeah, it's the first line in 16A. Right, right, the first line in 16A does that. And then 16B doesn't actually have a new time limit, but it says that uh, the Registry of Motor Vehicles and schools can, and some education department can make rules around it for that are different. Um, so that's where, 
Uh, so maybe we should just add a little bit, or maybe we should mess with that sentence a little bit more if I can find it. Um, section 16B and, why don't we just give it a number? I believe it's general law. Uh, no, it's it's C at five forty, whatever that means. Five forty CMR registry code of, code of Massachusetts regulations. Yeah, and that okay, and Massachusetts regulations five forty CMR. Okay, hang on a minute. Where'd that sentence go? The end. Massachusetts regulation. 540 CMR. Extends this to stool grounds. I live for maximum of one minute and then it's and that's fine for one minute. Any 15 minute period is legal It's only legal if the temperature is under 35 degrees. It still reads a little funny because we just said it was five minutes was legal and now we're saying for a maximum of like it, of one minute. How about idling for? You could say something like the next sentence could read something like, um, well, I thought I had it in my brain, but no, you don't. Um, um, can I, can we wordsmith this? Um, See legal on school grounds. Uh, can I share my screen? Um, I, I want to go ahead and we can maybe it might be easier to wordsmith this because I'm actually typing in as we're talking so people can see what I've typed. Uh, Stephanie? You could say something, you could start that sentence that begins section 16b extends. Yeah, hang on a minute. Let me um let me show you what's there. Share screen. Wordsmith this quickly. Okay, let me make this bigger again. View page width. Okay, so we are here. Section 16B and the Massachusetts Regulation 540 CMR. There should be a space there. Let's make it a keep together space. Extends this to school grounds. Oh, right. I would say I wouldn't say extends this to school grounds. What would, I would you say? Poses more significant restrictions. Yes, right. On school grounds. That's what I was missing. I would do imposes instead of poses. Yeah, imposes, yes. Okay, imposes. Imposes. You could say more significant or, you know. Yeah. I would also say establishes because I feel like imposes is like pretty negative. Imposing. <clears throat> Maybe it would just be in, uh, establishes stricter restrictions. Stricter restrictions is fine. Yeah. Stricter restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, <so>, oh, well. <laughs> What's another synonym? Um, yeah. Establishes. Restrictor limits. Stricter limits. Well, I like that. Yeah, then, then your colon makes sense. Yes. Idling for a maximum. But I would say, I would even be clear and say, idling on school grounds is impermissible, um, except when temperature is under 35 degrees. I suppose you should put Fahrenheit, but maybe not. Um, yeah. Except when... and, and then only for a maximum of one minute in any 15 minute period. Only for, yeah, only for a, a maximum. Ah. In any. In any. Something like that. 
establishes stricter limits on school grounds. Idling on school grounds is impermissible except when the temperature is under 35 degrees Fahrenheit and then only for one minute in any 15 minutes. Should you say a private a private vehicle? Because like it is different if you're a school bus. Yes, yes. Idling on school grounds. Like just idling a private vehicle on school grounds. Idling a private vehicle on school grounds is impermissible except for the temperature. Right. It should it should be I think as um, Don said uh, for only for a maximum of one minute. Yeah. And that take out the then in other words. No, and then <laughs> is fine. Only, only for oops, for, oops, a maximum. For a maximum. I left off a maximum. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Maximum of one minute in any fifteen minute period. Dress warmly. I like the last sentence. <laughs> um, so I think I'm good with that. I mean, so just I to the point that um, I think we started with that people don't know this law or this rule generally. Um, I think also there's a pretty small portion of the population that reads the Gazette, yeah. unfortunately. Um, I'm wondering if we want, want to add something that says uh, we encourage school school administrators to post signs on their grounds. Yeah, part of the regulations also give specifications for the signs they're supposed to post or allowed to post. So we, we, we could also, that. or maybe that's a separate activity we could take. Uh, just yeah, to schools. Yeah. That was another item on my like to do okay. list with respect okay. to idling that I haven't gotten to was reaching out to the schools and um, the drivers ed programs specifically to see. And if we could clip this it. article and send it to them along with a little personal note that says, please consider putting on idling anti idling signs and perhaps even link them to the relevant law so that they know where to go to get the verbiage for the signs. I think the ask that had been suggested in the last meeting we talked about this in was to see if it could go out in like like a similar kind of PSA in like a parent's newsletter. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know, can I can I make one other suggestion just on the fourth line down? Sure. Generally speaking, you don't say under the it's just under mass under general laws chapter 90 section A. And then I would begin that next sentence just so there's no confusion. So before section, yeah, Massachusetts General Law, Laws Chapter 90, Section A, 16A. And then I would put, um, and, and you can even abbreviate it if you want on the next sentence, MGL, um, capital M, capital G, capital L, Chapter 90, Section 16B. Uh, I, yeah, MGL or whatever, if you want to spell it out again, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 90. Oh, I see, I see. Section 16B. Yeah, that's that's the way you'd abbreviate it. In MGL any... Chapter 90, Section 16. Oh, wait. Oh, I, I see. I see what you're saying. Not yeah. here. Yeah. So then MGL, then put a, put a small C or CH period yeah 90 yeah comma and then a small s small 16, f section 16. yeah 16b so so that um Is laws or general law it's massachusetts general laws laws okay and laws plural okay MDL chapter 90, section 16B in Massachusetts. And Massachusetts regulations 540 CMR establishes. Need something. How about furthermore? How about that? Okay. Just as a better segue. MDL chapter 90, section 16B. I think I Do we need on school grounds again here?
Does that work? Yeah, I, think I, we I, would, I would I would leave it in. I see I see it both ways. So if you guys would prefer to leave it in, that's fine with me. I don't care. All right, and I spelled out degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is fine, rather than trying to find the right symbols. Okay, so then the plan for this, um, to put in the minute so we don't forget, is to send this to the Gazette, assuming we all, we have to have a vote on it, I think, right? But assuming it passes, we send it to the Gazette. So the, the proposal would be to send it to the Gazette and to follow up by also trying to find uh, parent teacher newsletters, school newsletters to publish it in and outreach to school administrators about getting signs in place. So three things, right? Stella, does that sound right to you? Because, oh, sorry, go ahead, Steve. No, I, I think that's right. I just wanted to add that at least at um, Crocker Farm School, they've they since COVID, they sort of changed the drop off and pickup pattern for parents. And as I understand it, it sort of they they signal cars to come in to an area close to the school that drop off the kids and then the car can continue. So a whole line of cars is sort of constantly moving in a line. And I think it'd be, it'd be hard not to have your car idling in that situation. The better situation would be to go back to the way it was before COVID and um, ha have a, dr a, a drop off that's not quite as controlled by the school staff as it used to be. Um, so the, I'm not sure my wife has complained about this. <laughs> so, so they create they create a traffic jam instead of giving you a lot yeah. to, to sit in and wait. Right. You know, I think now yeah, the staff are involved in quite a quite an intensive level for um bringing the kids out and bringing them to a car and and likewise in the morning picking them up at the car and then leading them into the school. So it, it's slower and it results in this slow moving traffic jam as opposed to parents kind of circling in, dropping off, letting the kid run over to the school like they used to be able to do. So it may be seeing if the schools are willing to redesign their pick up and drop off, the parents pick up and drop off procedure, at least at Crocker Farm. That the letter, um, the letter looks good, I think. Yeah, that sounds that sounds great. Uh but I think that's probably a bigger ask. <laughs> of the schools obviously I mean it sounds like it's very necessary but I don't think I could like take that on in the next uh two months before ECAC parental leave is convincing the schools to redo their whole pick up and drop off procedure um so I think I think I think maybe I'll make a note of that and then but I think I think just like trying to get some information out there might be the the to-do list item for now if that sounds good to people yeah i think i think raising the issue so they're aware of it maybe suggesting that a different drop-off pickup pattern could work and let that percolate with them for a while and and i'll tell my wife to write a letter too complaining and suggesting change and maybe enough people do that they'll move on it does anyone here who here has kids in which schools i mean mine's long graduated um, I have one at Crocker Farm and one at the uh, high school. Ah, so maybe we could ask you to reach out to those two. Stella, do you have kids in any of the schools? Uh, she's still in preschool. preschool. In yeah. Which school will she be going to? Um, probably Wildwood. Wildwood. Yeah. So maybe the obvious thing to do is for Steve to reach out to um, high school and Crocker Farm. And then if you want Stella to reach out to the others or just to Wildwood or, and then I can take care of, if it's okay with you, you or I can take care of sending it to the Gazette. Um, and then I'll leave the rest of the, uh, well, I should ask. Um, well, first of all, we should make sure that this letter is as we want it. We should go ahead and I think, Stephanie, I think we need a vote, right? 
to approve the letter and go ahead and um yeah you could you could vote just to make it official i don't think it's all right absolutely necessary but you you could so you just want to but do you need to close it out so that uh, i can see everybody yeah. oh yeah i think we need a motion to um to uh accept the letter as it now is and uh send it out to the gazette and other and school newsletters in town uh, i think that's the first that's probably what we ought to be having a motion for so do we have a motion in a second i'll motion to what you said <laughs> would second anyone i don't i don't feel like as chairing i feel like i shouldn't be I can, oh, second. I can second. Oh, okay. okay. All right, then. All right, then in no particular order, Roof? Yes. Goldner? Yes. Selman? Yes. Bregger? Yes. Allison? Yes. And D? Yes. Great. And thank you, Stella, for drafting that. Yep. So now who's going to do what? <laughs> So that this actually gets done. Stella, which parts do you are you comfortable with? Do you want to do it? Because then you can say you're the chair. It just means that the, I've I've written a letter. You put maybe have to like a letter to the editor to the Gazette before. They'll just like call you to be sure we're like really ECAC. Okay, so I'll <laughs> sign the one. I'll send the one to uh I'll sign for the Gazette and send a copy to the Gazette. Um and they have like an online submission box that you like can copy and paste it into. Also, because you, you now have the voted on version. Huh? You Sorry. have the voted on version. Yes, I have the voted on version. So what I'll do um, is I will go ahead and sign it. Uh -oh, so they have a paste in, so they don't even need an actual physical signature. No. Um, OK, so then what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and submit it uh, for ECAC. And Stella, you should feel free to do the same. Submit it for ECAC to, unless you, you know, want me to make a formal memo with my name on it or something like that, um, to do the same, submit it to uh, whatever school folks you want to do. And the same thing, Steve, um, I guess that can be less formal. Yeah, that was, I was going to do that less formally. Um, okay. I'm also wondering whether it makes sense to let, assuming, and if the uh, Gazette publishes the letter to the editor, then we can use that to cut out um, or electronically um, cut <laughs> and paste. Uh, it might have a bit more weight if it was actually published, if you will. Published. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, one so other, I'll start off by doing the online submission thing. One other potential place to, to add it would be the um, athletic departments. My experience is that Yep. The parents waiting to pick up their kids after practices and games, myself included, sit in their cars outside of the middle school and the high school, and it it's a lot of idling. I mean, I don't know if it's how much it is, but it's that might be a, a good group of parents to, I don't want to wave a finger at us, but friendly remind us, come in and watch the end of the practice instead of burning. Okay. All right, so I'll send copies of that, the final letter to Steph, to Stephanie who will distribute it. Um, let me make sure I've saved it so I don't lose it. Don't want to lose Jesse, it. that also sounds like um, a good place for like, if there's any coaches who are on board with this kind of stuff, like it seems like it would be a friendly, it would feel most friendly coming from a coach being like, hey, like, why don't you come inside instead of like <laughs> idling, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's that is like I wonder if point. we're the right messenger, if we should try to go through like a coach there who might have more a coach weight. or just the athletic department and have them disseminate it out to their I mean there's dozens of coaches. Um I it's a good it I think it, there, there's maybe a broader email there for transportation as well to talk about the fact that 
20 cars drive to Chicopee for the away game, <laughs> you know, carpooling, for example. Maybe, maybe Stella, you and I could do an athletic specific friendly reach out. Friendly <laughs> there PSA. Might, <laughs> there's a lot there. I've been, I've been <laughs> trying to figure this one out for a while. Okay. Um, all right. With that all in place, and I hope I hope still you got that. Who's doing what in the in the minutes? Because um, I was having a hard time keeping track of all of it and and paying attention to everything. I, got I think so. Up. The main thing is, I think I think you're going to submit it to the the Gazette. Yeah, that I got. And then I agree that I think we wait for it to be in the Gazette. Which it will be, you know, they don't like reject stuff like this. Okay. And then we do the next <laughs> and then thing. we send we do the next thing because I do think it's nice if you can like to refer to like a printed document. Okay, cool. If if the Gazette asks us to um reduce the length of it a little bit, can we agree to have Laurie and Stella work on that on their own? Sure. Okay. Super. I don't think we need a Vote to do that too, but it's a vote of confidence. Vote of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that long, right? Hopefully, hopefully they'll be okay with it. Um. All right. So, um, next, should we go on to the next thing? We have a lot to cover today. Any further discussion on this? Okay. So the next thing is another draft this is shorter i think because i just wanted you guys to have a this is just sort of my response to the town council on the climate bank which i finally got a very nice letter back from uh i don't think this had happened the last time we were here i got a letter back from jared friedman on joe comerford's chief of staff um and he he tracked this down for me uh and figured out that yes there is a when we last left <laughs> there was a, I thought that the whole thing was premature, that there really wasn't a climate bank at all yet because there was no funding for it because I found a bill to fund it. Well, according to Jared Friedman, um, it was funded with $50 million seed money uh, through mass housing and department, let's see, and um, Department of Environmental Protection. So the money was taken from Department of Environmental Protection and mass housing is supposed to oversee the program, climate bank program. But as it turns out, they haven't regulated, they, they haven't issued rules yet on how they're gonna do that. So that's why it's stuck. It's stuck in mass housing because there are no rules. So in my last contact with Jared, I asked him, well, who, at, he, he sent me a letter, he paraphrased something that someone at mass housing had told him, but he didn't give me a name. <laughs> so I said, okay, well, can you tell me who we should contact to keep tabs on this? And he said he would get back to me. So I haven't, that's where we left it before Christmas. And so I thought, I don't wanna wait anymore to respond to the town council because I think we, we sort of know what to say at this point. Uh, so I'm just gonna, so I mock this thing up pretty quickly. And if there are any comments, I'm happy to have them. Did I share the right thing? Yes. Yep. So why don't we just take a minute to look at this if you have any comments or objections or. And, and by the way, this wasn't actually a town manager goal. It was just, I think I incorrectly called it that. I didn't, I think I did it right at the town council meeting. It was just an ask of the town that they have this, put this climate bank in place. Yeah, I don't think it was a goal. Right. period.
And if there are any comments, I'll take them now. And if not, I'll just send it like this on to the town council um, with Stephanie's guidance as to who should be in the <laughs> in the uh, two line. Should I just send it to Athena and let her? No, you can. Um, Lynn Griesmer is the oh, I was uh, elected as president again, so send, it, send to it to Lynn. Okay. And just make sure you copy me and Athena. Paul Bachman as well. You and Athena. And and I'm Paul Bachman, okay. Correct. Try to put that in my actual notes so I don't lose it. I think I've written this down three other times. But Send to Lynn Guzma with CC to Paul Bachelman, Stephanie. All right. Any comments or should we move on? Paul, I'm just looking, looking yeah. real quickly. I mean, $50 million is not very much money. Obviously, that's a seed. seed seed money yep. and i'm just looking at the legislation that you cited um i don't know how much see whether there was any do any dollar value that they were planning to establish really establish the bank with yeah i don't know i honestly didn't get that far into reading it and it is only seed money at this point until there are rules that's not even available so um well it does say the very last uh, section of the bill which happens to be paragraph z <laughs> says by request of the governor the state treasurer may also issue and sell up to 750 million um, in bonds within a given physical year to capitalize the bank so that's real money that starts to be real money for sure yeah, yeah. all right i'm not sure if we need that in in there uh because it, it's good to know yeah. <laughs> it's good to know thank you i figured i would check back in when there are rules and then and then get the details and see whether or not it's realistic all right so any other comments steve jesse don stella no stephanie okay so if not i will stop sharing And we will move on to the next item in the agenda. Let's see, where are we? Solar bylaw discussion continued. And also number eight is a, uh, oh, the educational series. So what, let's, let's do the solar bylaw discussion continued. I think that's you, Dwayne, right? Is there more <laughs> to talk about yet? Uh, not so much on my end. I, I will say that, um... I'm, I'm, um, I think it, it was fresh off the press, maybe when we talked about it before the, the rulings of the, um, AG's office on Pelham and Shootsbury. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, I think just amongst the solar bylaw working group, we're sort of feel like we're in, we, we, um, are probably in, in in better shape. Obviously, this is still needs to have legal review by the town legal council. Um, um, but that being said, I think some of the red fl red flags, if you will, that the AG brought up beyond the sort of procedural ones um, for for the two uh, proximate towns, um, we didn't really we purposefully avoided those in our bylaw. So I think we're going to be in better shape in that regard. That being said, I also recognize that we're, we're a city, not a town. Uh, so uh, we were not reviewed by the AG's office, but it's almost the same thing because yeah. um, these are the issues that would be raised by potential lawsuits from entities that would um, take the take exception to the 
um, to the bylaw. Um, so um, I didn't really have anything else to discuss unless there's questions about it. Uh, but then I'd leave it to Stephanie with regard to process. Um, my guess is um, I think the town council, the new town council met for the first time um, this pet, maybe last week or this week it was even, uh, and swore in their new members and so forth. I, I don't know whether uh, there is anything on the solar bylaw that was raised to the uh, priority of the very first meeting. Uh, no, <laughs> I can answer that. So they met yesterday, they were sworn in, and I think it'll be a while before this even comes up. I mean, okay. it it's not going to be a, a, a priority item. I think they've got, they still have to determine who's going to be in which committees, um, who's going to chair the committees. There's, you know, there's a lot of details that they have to work out. So I would say if it happened before the end of February, I'd be surprised, honestly. It being a discussion or a vote? Uh, I'd be even coming up as a discussion. There's no, definitely not a vote. Not a vote. It was vote. not asked to be a vote at this time. If you recall, what the recommendation from the committee is, is that it go to, it be referred to the CRC for review and refinement because it's not really complete yet. So they would refine it and then it would, um, and then it would also be, uh, we've also asked that it go to various department heads and others to review and comment on as well. And, but it would be sent from them, which that hasn't happened yet either. So. Right, right. So, so we have Stephanie, plenty... Oops, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna ask that, so the CRC, is that is that a committee of the council? Correct. And so it has to be reestablished re um, by the council, the new council? Correct. Uh, before that, before it would be re uh, referred to them. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's going to be a while before all of that happens. Right. Okay. So I think what we should do is maybe not keep this on as a um, as a regular as a regular agenda item, but we should keep it sort of in the background. If anybody uh, wants to discuss it, let us know. We'll stick it back on. And also, there are the regular solar updates anyway. Uh, every other week. So if there's something else that comes up, I suppose we can chat about it then. And meanwhile, I, I still haven't looked at the whole bylaw, the draft that's there. I just haven't had time. Um, but I encourage everybody to go ahead and take the time to have a look at it, including me. I, I did have a couple of questions or question or two on, do we know if the uh, state attorney general office has reviewed solar bylaws in other communities across the states besides Pelham and Shutesbury? If there is a town that has drafted a solar bylaw, it gets reviewed by the AG's office. That's right. the process. If it is a city, it is not. Okay. I, I guess I was should have said, have they rejected any parts of other towns' oh. solar bylaws across the state that we know of? Dwayne might know that more than I, or Don. I think I, think I read someplace that Leverance is subject to a lawsuit. Um, I don't know where I read that. Shootsbury certainly is. Is it a lawsuit? Maybe it, 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 it's a I believe so. There's a lot of road signs that indicate that Shootsbury is being sued. Yeah, I'm not sure if the if the bylaw is being sued or whether that project is being uh, oh. uh, sued uh, sued I against the project itself. I thought the town of Shutesbury was being sued is what I got. I, I know there are lawsuits pending, yeah, you know, relating to um the reasonableness of restrictions on solar siding. I, I, I know that. I know the land court has a case and um and I think I read someplace else. So I, I'll take a look at that for the next time we meet, because I know there are lawsuits out there that, that are actually directed at the particular provision that you all noted, Dwayne, the provision in mass general laws that basically says you can only restrict solar development with certain findings um, and, you know, public health, welfare and, and, and whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Safety. And I, I know the I know the meaning of that language is being tested in the courts. I 
and I know that there's been some proposed legislation to change that. Um, it, it's, I don't think, I don't know how far along it's, it is advanced, but people are hoping, some people are hoping to, to change that, particularly in respect to solar. Yeah. Um, the, the one thing that caught my eye, both in the, the Shutesbury letter and the Pelham letter from the attorney general's office was the, both letters mentioned that um, the, uh, that chapter 40, section three's prohibition against unreasonable regulation will turn in part on whether the bylaw promotes rather than restricts the legislative goal. And this is referring to the Mass Massachusetts 2050 decarbonization roadmap. So I'm, I don't know how much weight these letters from the attorney general's office has, but this idea that a bylaw needs to promote a legislative goal rather than restrict it is intriguing and even perhaps scary. Um, Cause how, how does that work and how do you interpret whether it's promoting a, a legislative goal or not? Uh, then I, I would argue that my reading of the Amherst bylaw, the draft bylaw, it does not promote the 2050 decarbonization roadmap goals. It simply restricts solar more than it does than than exists today. <clears throat> I guess that's yeah. I guess that I mean, sort of um, at least sort of the primer that we got from Christine Bestrup with regard to zoning. I mean, zoning is really about a restrictive exercise. Um, uh, so, you know, obviously there's, it's restricted because you have to have these set asides uh, and these permits and requirements and process and so forth. So it's all about restrictions. Um, right. Interesting. Uh, so it probably does read as very, very restrictive, uh, but uh, whether it's, unreasonably or but or whether it sort of promotes um the opportunity to site so solar well you know well-sided solar um i guess you have to sort of read what's left after you restrict everything take it look at all the reduce you know consider all the restrictions yes and that, yeah part of it part of the other parts of the letter were um sort of pointing at there there seems to be needs to be ample land available for solar facilities in a community and if there is then restrictions of various degrees are okay if there is not then those restrictions are not okay but ample land all we know from the tracer lane study is that less than two percent is not <laughs> <ample>. <laughs> which yeah, is not true. somewhat I I was going to say somewhat ironic because in Amherst, at least, you know, two percent or so is kind of the target that ECAC came up with in our memo last year. That would be an what we what we considered a, an appropriate amount. That wouldn't be the case for the more densely populated communities. So, so thank you, Steve. I'd forgotten that that was the reason we put this on the agenda again, just because we wanted to hear a little more about about you got cut off last time. Uh, so, Jesse, go ahead. Just a quick clarifying question and you may have said this and I just I didn't hear it right are they considering Amherst a city or a town Amherst is a city yeah Good. it's a that, city that, that's we are the city known as the town of Amherst once the charter passed we became yeah. a city that that was and it's confusing it's it. yeah it is yeah. confusing because it we're the city known as a town. town yeah exactly thank you well, I would still, I haven't developed my ideas much farther on this, but I mentioned them before. I would like to sort of see if there's a way we might be able to have the bylaw actually promote solar on the lands that are most suitable for it while maintaining restrictions on the lands that are most suitable for other things like agriculture and open spaced and forests. So I, I will still try to bring up some kind of a memo to share with the committee here um, for, for discussion at a future meeting. Right, that all makes really good sense. I think. All right, so we'll we'll keep talking about this as needed. If you have something specific, Steve, that you want us to look at, uh, let's make sure we put it on the agenda. But um, for next week, I think we'll leave it off just as an update, maybe in the update. Yeah, that's fine. And um, yeah, 
And I do look forward if Don comes across any other court cases or rulings, um, I'd, yeah. I'd be very interested in, in hearing about that. So thank you, Don. Yep. And, and let just, me just ask um, Stephanie, I mean, in terms of the, um, the town legal counsel won't really review the bylaw until the council is done with it? Or, Correct. They won't yeah. read it until it's final. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Or it's, well, yeah, it's a final draft they'll review. Um, and I did want to remind you all that um, Greg Garrison is scheduled to come to the next meeting. So there will be an hour, 5.30 to 6.30 with his presentation. Okay, so that's the next thing that's on the agenda. And I really want to talk about that because I'm out of town for this next one, which is sad because I really wanted to hear this, but I will listen to the tape afterwards. I just won't have a chance to ask my questions. Um, I will certainly listen to it. Uh, I might be able to attend. I can't promise, though. It depends. I'm going to be in Costa Rica on vacation, and if I'm going scheduling a hike or a kayak that afternoon, I'm going hiking or kayaking. So, <laughs> but if it's raining and we're sitting around, I will definitely join the meeting. Um, so, who is going to? We need a flyer. We need advertising. We need something to get sent out to our. You know, how does this get advertised, Stephanie? How have we done this? Okay. Past? So in the past, what we've done is one of you have developed a flyer um, and then you've gotten it to me and I have submitted it to the director of communications who sent it out and posted it on social media and did all kinds of wonderful things immediately. However, we no longer have a director of communications that works for uh -huh. the town. So what I will be doing is sending it to IT and requesting that they get it out. Um, I will do my best to convey urgency for getting it on social media. I think honestly, the places it has the most impact are, you know, the social media and the website. And I can, I can certainly get it, you know, ask that it go on the website immediately um, in, in our news item. So it would run on the news for like a week or so. Um, so I can request that, uh, or I could request that they do it for the whole time. I had volunteered actually to pull together a flyer and just, I didn't get to it before the holidays and I'm only just back and I've got a budget due on Friday. So, um, I haven't had a chance to do it yet, but I don't, it wouldn't take much to pull a flyer together and I could probably do it tomorrow morning. First thing, it shouldn't be hard to do. And that way, if you're okay with it, I can just, you know, if you're all right with me just drafting something and getting it out, because really it just needs the information. That'd be great. If you'd also send copies to all of us, Stephanie, that way yep. we can send it to our, I have a mailing right. list I can send it to, you know, this mm -hmm. sort of thing, let people know about it. Um, yep. I would really like to see a crowd show up at this. It'd be great if we got people interested. Um, there's so many things to talk about. Uh, yep. And I'm sorry, do we have a quorum for next week? Yes, I believe so. Okay. And remind me who our co-chair is. Jesse. Uh, Jesse. Jesse. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Jesse. Yeah. Okay. So, Jesse, would would you then facilitate Greg's appearance and everything? Yeah, that sounds great. Cool. That's the thirteenth. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Seventeenth. The seventeenth, rather. Okie dokie. Can someone, can I assign snacks to somebody? <laughs> Just paste them on the cameras. Oh. <laughs> I made a nice nut bread I can give, you know, push some. Right. <laughs> You'd like to be in receipt of that. <laughs> bring it by, bring it by. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, see, that's the thing. Oh. Is it while we're on that topic, I'm sorry, I have, um, because we were going to talk about um, additional speakers, and I had someone reach out to me from Sunbug Solar, a um, woman named Lydia, who uh, was interested. She she watched our last meeting and saw that we were looking for solar presenters and had offered to have, um, to come speak uh, on a topic that we might be interested. They said they, she said they had experience um, that they could speak on battery storage and EVs in addition to solar, but also that they were involved in the Munson agrivoltaic project and that yeah. they're 
getting involved. They've got others that are quote in the works. So if we were um, interested in having her come and speak about agrivoltaics, she'd be happy to. They also have experience with uh, grazing sheep and solar projects partnered together. So if you would like that as a follow-up to Greg's presentation, we could do that. I think that would be great. I just worry if she's with Sunbug Solar, is she going to be able to do a, this is the same question we had last year with uh, one of the heat pump providers, right? As long as she realizes that this, it can't be an advertisement for Sunbug. Right? Oh yeah, that's, yeah. I'm very clear with folks, you right. know, at least when I talk to them that they can't do that. Okay, and so it sounds like the topic could be a lot of different things, but uh, agrivoltaics, battery storage, EVs. Um, well, we could ask her to focus, so. Or yeah, pick pick something because I think all of those things are are good. Which one does she want to talk about? Um, or maybe integrate them all into some sort of a talk on you know all the all the other things around solar that that weren't covered somehow. Or or uh, I think sorry, go ahead, Dwayne. Yeah, I was just going to say I think um, and um, Laura's kind of driven this a bit. And she's not here today, but um, so the idea was to we you know we we've liaised and, and engaged with the solar bylaw that ha all has to do with ground mounted solar basically, and large larger scale if you will. Agrivoltaics was significantly addressed there. Um, there is actually a good recording of agri of of I think three or four agrivoltaic experts that we had at one of those meetings. Um, didn't include Sunbug, but several others that I think was very well um, done. So that's something we could refer to. I guess I, I'm sort of um, motivated, I guess, to move forward with Laura's leadership on, on sort of the built environment, particularly in how ECAC can be a motivating um, factor with our community in that regard. Um, yeah, and if there's already a good agrivoltaics uh, presentation, which I did not watch, Dwayne, I'm sorry, but, but if it's recorded, we could just show it again and have a discussion or something like that if people are interested. Um, but it sounds like maybe we do want to get Laura's input. Um, uh, and maybe the better topic would be battery storage and EV since that's more solar in the built environment. Or um, I don't know if Sunbug does it, but parking lot parking PV lot. systems uh, would be somebody who does has some expertise <laughs> oh, right. um, on that. Steve needs to keep moving around there. <laughs> right, <I know>. so, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so you want me to tell her to focus on battery storage EVs and oh. parking canopies? I'm not sure if Sunbug does parking canopies, but if um, they do, if they, if they do. do, and that's just well, an idea. Yeah. Um, or should we wait for Laura's input on this? before we decide to invite her? Um, that's the only question. It seems that if you're, um, I mean, if you're, you were looking for a bunch of topics, right? Yeah. So I think if it doesn't hit the nail on the head for what Laura was looking for, you could always find another. There's, I mean, I don't think we're at a loss of finding solar developers around that would be more than happy to speak. All right, so let's let's do that then. Let's ask her to speak on more on solar in the built environment. If she has a, a presentation, she can give on that. If everyone is in agreement there, and I will have to give her dates. I mean, we're saying the next meeting, but it may not work for her schedule. So I can find out if she could do the next meeting, and if not, uh, not next, obviously the seventeenth, the following, the next the meeting. following meeting after right after. Craig. Right. And do you want it to be the, do you want it to be like the second meeting in February or so that we don't have, to, you know, because you it, it's going to take an hour of your meeting time. So yes. do you want to devote that much? Let, let's try for the second meeting in February or later than that. So the earliest would be the second meeting in February. Okay. All right. Okay, and that certainly gives time for Laura to weigh in too. Yep. Okay, uh, where are we on the schedule? 
Um, so, so I think that's good. We have, we're putting together the educational series on solar in the built environment. Um, staff updates are next. Um, well, a few things were covered that I was going to address. One was the January 22nd DPU public hearing, which Paul mentioned earlier. Right. Um, and then I also just spoke about Sunbug Solar, so that's covered. Um, I wanted to let you all know that an RFP has gone out for a vendor for the Valley Bike share oh. program Yay. um well it's you know <laughs> it's a next step it's not a guarantee but um we're we're needing to have uh vendors respond to the rfp for us to have a better sense of how much the program will cost communities there are eight communities or eight well, I should say seven communities and UMass that are participating. Um, and so it depends on how much a program will be and we'll have to have a sense once we get responses from the vendors. Um, but we are looking for a goal to get it established again for this spring of 2024. So that's what we're shooting for. Um, there's also going to be a convening of legislators uh, that, I've been in contact with uh, Rep Dome, Mindy Dome about, and Mindy and I are working together, um, but Mindy's reached out to legislators, uh, both at the um, local, uh, the state and federal level, but then also we're reaching out to the um, executives and all the participating communities as well to convene to sort of talk about the future of bike share and its long-term uh, sustainability. So uh, that, that's not going to be a public session. That's going to be a and by invitation only, but it'll be an opportunity for us to hopefully do some, um, I don't know, some brainstorming to sort of see what we can come up with. Um, I did mention very quickly too that um, I have a budget due on Friday. It's pretty much going to be similar to what I submitted last year, which was the request for an additional staff person. Um, I. I don't know at this point if I'm going to ask for the administrative support as well. I suppose I could. Um, I don't know if it's better or hinders or helps <laughs> to have a request for two, but um, the big ask is primarily for the energy manager position. Um, I'm also going to be asking for some funding for operations as well. Uh, then um, just an update, and Lori may want to cover this too, but uh, we did interview four new members for the ECAC. We had two folks that we identified. Um, I'm not going to announce who they are yet because I don't know if they've been asked and have accepted. Um, so that follow-up happens at the town manager level, but they don't actually they don't actually get to start participating until their appointments are confirmed by the town council. And again, <laughs> this could take some time. Um, I think that was the case with, um, I think even maybe Don and Lori, it was a while before you actually started serving because we have to wait for the confirmations to happen. So, it, you know, again, it could be like February or even March before we get those folks on board. Hopefully it will be sooner than later. You said two more? Two more, yes. Two more. So, so there are two vacancies right now. The thing is <laughs> in June, some of you will be, your terms will be up again. And um, I think what has been the case, uh, you know, you all have obviously three-year terms. Technically, you're not supposed to do more than two consecutive three-year terms, but I think in some cases, um, depending on where you landed and whether you are filling somebody else's term, you might be able to get reappointed again. So some of you may choose to sign off that, I mean, sometimes, People will be asked if they want to stay and continue. Um, so I think, you know, that's kind of at the time manager's discretion as to, you know, whether it's time for people to sort of, you know, move on and get new membership or whether they'll ask for people to continue. So, um, so I'll be reaching out to those folks whose terms are uh, winding down just to see if they're even interested in being reappointed. So that's, I think that's my update for today. Stephanie. You're welcome. And I just want to um, say, I'm also pretty excited about the new members uh, who we can't name yet, but <laughs> uh, they'll bring some pretty nice skills and um, 
and background to the committee. Um, all right, so other oh, updates from- oh, Sorry, sorry. I have one more I, that I totally forgot about. And I literally just had the meeting before this meeting. Potentially, it depends on IT, but potentially the dashboard will be launched. We're shooting for next Monday, January 8th for the community dashboard to be launched Yay. on sustainability. So um, I'm excited. I think it looks great. And I hope you all are pleased with it. So look for it. I'll look for it before I- I'll, I will it. certainly let you know. You will be getting links. <laughs> you will all be getting a link when it goes out. Excellent. Oh, that's great to hear. Um, okay, so member updates, any updates? Um, I th uh, go ahead, Stella, then Steve. Yeah, I think I talked about this before. It might make more sense for me to talk about this with Stephanie offline, but I do plan to go on ECAC parental leave in March. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. We had um, <laughs> I, I think some of you knew that. Some of you maybe maybe didn't know that. Um, but for forum reasons, because I think my term ends in June, I'm going to take eight weeks of parental leave from like my day job. Um, so maybe Stephanie and I should talk about if it makes sense, more sense for quorum reasons to actually like resign earlier. Um, we can, we can, we can talk, talk offline. That. Yeah. Right. Uh, cause it might be oddly timed. Uh, I suspect the new members will be in by then. By okay. early March. Yeah. I would so hope, I hope so. so. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, I say early March, it's it's likely to be early March. It, it could be any time from mid-February on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So ah, well, hopefully we'll have any members and it won't be an issue, Stella, because we need to lose you. <laughs> but have you you've only served one term at this point, right? Or no? Uh yeah, but I don't think I would be up for a term with a newborn. Okay. It's hard enough right. doing a term with a small child. Oh, I see. To resign <laughs> earlier rather than later to, to Yeah. Uh, at the disadvantage of not seeing each other in person, I didn't know you were uh, with with yeah, child still. So congratulations right. on that. I had no idea either. And hope <laughs> everything goes well. Yeah, that's wonderful. Oh, I thought you were at that meeting, Dwayne. But um, also, I do see you in Holdsworth every so often. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I shoot my head down. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, awesome. Stella. That's awesome, Stella. That sounds much more important than this. <laughs> oh, thanks. It'll be fun. It'll be more chaos. It'll be good, good chaos. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Other uh, updates? Go ahead, Steve. Uh, I just had an announcement to make. Um, upcoming on January 22nd will be a um, session by Mass Audubon in-person session. It's at the Banks Community Center in Amherst. It's um, titled Growing Solar, Protecting Nature, um, public presentation in the for the Pioneer Valley. And you have to register, but it's free. Um, if you search for that, Growing Solar, Protecting Nature, and throw in Mass Audubon, you'll probably find it easily. But I'll, I'll share the link with Stephanie. Um, I believe this will be a discussion of the report they put out, I think, in the fall uh, with a similar title, um, basically promoting their analysis uh, and then proposals for policy changes that would allow Massachusetts to reach its decarbonization goals its, and its renewable energy goals with more solar on canopies and, and rooftops than on particularly forests. Um, I've signed up. I'm going to go. I, I, I like their policy idea. I have some critiques of their analysis um, and some of the headlines from the report they did earlier, but um, I'm going to go and see what they have to say. And I would encourage, I think it would be interesting for some of the rest of you to go to that as well. Do you know what time, yes. Steve? Yes. Let me double check. I'll go back to that. Where did it go? There, um, it is 6 to 7.30 PM, ah. Monday, January 22nd. It's going to be at the Banks Community Center. You do need to register uh, online, but if you go to it's a Growing Solar Protecting Nature, Mass Audubon, that you should be able to find it with a Google search or your favorite search engine search. Actually, here's the here's the address. It's massaudubon.org/slash/growing solar, all one word, growing solar. 
I registered, so I'll see you. There. Oh, excellent. Okay. Yay. It'd be some interesting discussion. <laughs> yeah. Um, other announcements? Stephanie, do you know there's the local energy advocates is having an event? Is that oh, yeah. a public event that could be announced here or is that more of their private group event? I don't know about it. So, and I doesn't, I don't know, either Jesse or Lori might know more. Yeah, it's their um, retreat. Right. And if you're a member of LEA, I think you're invited. Uh, membership means being on the mailing list. So <laughs> at least I think that's what it is. That was my impression. I am going to try to go, but as it's T minus 40 hours or so to plane trip, uh, I might not quite make it. It's Sunday afternoon. Yeah, it's yeah, this and coming Sunday. Yeah, three hours. My plan yeah, is, I, yeah. I was invited um, and asked to speak about a topic that I'm not an expert on, uh, but I'll do it anyhow, uh, which is solar and parking lot canopies uh, as an option for what uh, sort of, the, I think the focus of the retreat, or at least a focus of the retreat, is um, projects that the local energy advocates can take on that, uh, that's, significant yeah. projects that they can take on. So there's a series of speakers on different potential such projects. Um, that's about all I know about it. Um, but so I'm going to be there. Yeah, that, was, that was my impression too. They're going to, they, they've been trying to find a project to work on for a long time. So this is their a big project. They do a lot of little things, but um, um, and it's, if you're, a, so if you're on their email list and if people wanted to get on their email list so they can attend and where is it being held? It's uh, online. Zoom. Yeah. Zoom. So it's a zoom meeting. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, let's see. Like it went out to the entire LEA. You're on there, Dwayne. I'm seeing you. Yeah. 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 Ben, ben Mitchell, um, well, Tim McDonald, Ashley Muspratt, Bill Keo Hill, and you. And and Russ Vernon Jones is going to facilitate it. So okay. you're on there. It it's an impressive list of speakers. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a nice list of speakers it, it's kind of an awkward time i hope it's a rainy afternoon so i don't feel bad about sitting yeah. inside sorry what time is that again uh two to five p.m oh. yeah i this is my problem too if it's really nice out i need to get out on sunday afternoon so i'm not sure if i'm going to go to this or not but it's on my, well, that's my plan is to try to go it's supposed to snow saturday into sunday just fyi i don't know if it'll oh. be still snowing at two but might be perfect that's then. what i heard Potentially. Well, if, if there's snow home, on the ground, I'll be outside. <laughs> <laughs> With sledding in hand. <laughs> if if there's enough, absolutely. <laughs> or skiing. Or yeah. shoveling. And it's they've allocated three hours for this, so it's two to five PM. And if anybody wants to get on the list, I can just contact Darcy Dumont. Um, I can send you an email. Just contact me and I'll put you in touch. All right. Any other updates? Okay, if there are no other updates, we need agenda items for the next meeting, I think is next, right? Uh, so next meeting, we have our continue, our solar discussion, solar in the built environment. Um, I, it's Greg Garrison, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that's 630 to, uh, 530 to 630 or 430? Correct. 530 to 630. Right. And for the first hour of the meeting, what did we have? I think Laura was said she's willing to do an update yes. on COP28. Love to hear about that. So, um, and I think she said she could do it at that meeting. We could just put it on potentially. And if not, I'll 
take it off. Right. Okay. Love to hear about that. Um, uh, there's also, let's see, where have we been today? Continued discussion of the solar of the of the um, next education series, solar in the built environment um, discussion. So we need to discuss that a little bit. Are any other big issues coming up that we need to be talking about? Any policy issues at the state or federal, at the state or on local level we need to be chiming in on? I guess we'll get a follow up. Um, so I know Stella is not, uh, usually it would be uh, solar and what's the other one? The, the updates the updates this week were heat pumps and transportation. Next week it would be solar pace. and sorry, the other pace. One. Right. pace is the other one. Yep. So so let's do that. Hopefully there's some news with pace. Um, but I think instead of a solar update, why don't we uh, Stella? It sounds like there'll probably be an update next time. So you want to give us an update? On, well, maybe there won't be because it'll just have maybe have been published in the Gazette. But we should at least I'll at least call the driving schools to see if they talk about it at all, which is something okay. to know. So maybe put that under updates instead of um, solar again, since we sort of did solar today. Just jog it a little bit, if that's okay with you, Dwayne and Steve. Yeah, typically it alters it alternates. So the next one would be right pace and transportation. Yeah, I think. Oh, well, no, transportation or, is today. That's why I'm saying it would be solar oh, and pace, but let's substitute out solar for transportation again because there'll probably be more of an interesting update on that. Got it. I think also it'd be more useful to have a solar discussion after we hear from Greg. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll be the next That meeting. would be the, the meeting, meeting after. Exactly. So I'm so, saying just jog those two. Let's change the yeah. order. Got it. Anything else on anyone's mind for things we should be discussing? If not, let's go ahead and I don't think there's anybody attending. So there's no attendees. No public comment then. <laughs> and if there's nothing else, if anyone does come across, I'm more and more as I have more time to spend on this coming across issues that I personally, you know, respond to, and that might be interesting for ECAC to respond to. So if anyone sees anything that, you know, we should be making some noise about or sending a letter in for, or just doing something, um, or has an idea for other education series stuff, any way to outreach to the public to get folks more interested uh, one example, I found out this week that um, I, I, there was a little gathering, holiday gathering down my block. I met a couple of new neighbors last week. And one of them, it turns out, is part of some pilot program for geothermal, which has come up in various contexts. Um, I didn't know anybody. There were 30 projects around the state that were awarded some, some uh, uh, what do you call it, an example program. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pilot. Pilot. Pilot projects, yeah. yeah. And uh, she got one of them. So they're doing a study at her house. Um, unfortunately, I'll be out of town for it, or I'd go to see what they're doing. Um, and this is just in Echo Hill. There's someone who happens to have a flat front yard <laughs> so they can get a drilling rig in. And uh, she's part of some pilot project, which I think would be very interesting to hear more about. So I'll be calling her and asking her how that's going. And if there's something interesting for her to talk about, maybe I'll ask her to say a few words to us. But if you hear about things like that going on, it's always interesting, you know, the more you talk stuff up, the more people get interested in doing their own transitions, right? The more you see stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Is the pilot, I'm sorry, is the pilot project, is there some sort of funding for it that I, I missed that? I think it's mostly, uh, I, I don't know for sure. I, I, there, I think it's mostly, there is, there is a pilot funding for geothermal, but I thought it was larger projects. Yeah. Um, this might be just uh, a uh, you know zero percent loan for some ridiculous amount of money. <laughs> so, yeah. No. 
not sure what it is, but uh, that's what I want to find out from her. So it came up at a party where it was hard to get into the details. Um, but I have her. Oh, they have, you can get a 0% loan, I think, up to like $50,000 now. Yeah, um, but there's some other program she must have applied through because, uh, you know, like she, she was pretty clear that this was part of some pilot program and there were only 30 people throughout the state. I remember applying for something like that myself a while back. Uh, maybe it's a whole house electrification or something along those lines. Um, there have been several of them through the state where they do these, you know, they do some sort of a thing they want to get everybody to do on, on just a few houses to try to in different seed communities to try to get people to get interested in it. Um, so I'm not sure which program it is. That's something I want to figure out. What one thought came to mind, I, I know there's various initiatives happening at the state level mm -hmm. that are sometimes hard to learn about, especially the early initiatives. Might we consider inviting one of our elected uh, representatives to come to a meeting and Excellent. give us an update on, you know, what's the latest things happening in the, in the legislature? Do you, um, I've been in contact a lot with Mindy Doam lately. Do you want me to see if I can ask her if she's willing? That would be great. Yeah, it'd be that nice to be just great. have a yeah have her as a guest and hear hear updates. Um, we might think of some questions to ask. But I think that would be nice, nice exposure. Yeah. But so in focused on specific in legislation that's germane to the working of this group. Like one of the things yeah. I know that there's something on even bike share. That's um, something that normally you don't discuss, but might be some interesting. Uh, and I think Natalie Blay is sponsoring that legislation. So um, we're sponsoring that bill. So we could ask her uh, and she might actually recommend that we invite Natalie Blay, you know, um, so. Yeah, it, it might also help if we, you know, there are always so many bills in the works at different stages. It might be useful for us to come up with a list of bills we want updates on, you know, that, where are these things? Yep, that would be more useful, I think, because you know, I think if we were asking for something specific, that would be easier. So why don't we all give that some thought and we can talk about it a little more next time. Are there specific bills? So the homework is to, you know, spend a little time looking around to see in your, in your inbox for all that stuff that keeps coming through one after another, for which bills might be most interesting for us to ask our representatives about which issues. Another category would be if she knows of uh, programs that either communities, municipalities can sign up for incentives or even uh, individual citizens like the, the heat pump program you were just describing. If, yeah. if there's information on those, like where can we go to learn about them, that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. This is, uh, you know, the work of this committee and other groups like this that I've been involved with give me gives me hope. <laughs> Back to the excellent. It gives me hope. All right. And so, again, the article was not saying we should stop. It was saying we should just keep doing everything that we're doing because it's having an impact. It's having an impact. Just dig down and keep doing it. Keep doing it. Okay, and I think that brings us to the end of the agenda, right? Correct. So is there a move to adjourn? <laughs> sure, I move to adjourn. No, no objections, I think. No objections. <laughs> I can see this. What is it called? A, uh, yeah, anyway. It's unanimous. unanimous. <laughs> All right. Have a great trip, Lori. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, yeah, a, lot. Yeah, thanks totally. a lot. And uh, I, I really look forward to watching that tape if I don't catch the next meeting. I'm sorry I'm not going to be here. Take care. Thanks, Night. everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Night. Good night. Good night.